many, many uh, residents have put uh, messages into the authorities to say, you know, really important suggestions where blockages could have been cleared further up the river. And, and what's come out as a recurring theme is the lack of routine maintenance of the main significant trunk road through the north, the A2 coast road. Um, and from there were, I think the, the road was closed on the day because of flooding at the Rest and Be Thankful and at the Coroney. And the suggestion from people who live in the area, pe people who farm in the area, is that the responsibility to keep those gullies and drains cleared rests with the Department for Infrastructure. And that work has not been undertaken for many years. And We've been talking about steps to because Laxey have been have been flooded uh, has been flooded numerous times now and little steps to make sure that doesn't happen again and that sounds like a fairly reasonable one that potentially wouldn't cost too much money. Well, I think it it comes down to what 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 happened to the gangs that used to work in the local areas, and they had a routine sort of month by month worksheet that they knew which rivers to clear, which drains to clear at particular points. Um, but the the issue of the main A two coast road is significant because even just past the Minorca Balaric Road junction on the main road, there are residents with the increase in development along the main road and also um, Balaric and are off the sides of it. There's been much more runoff off that is going onto the main road and we've had constituents say they can't get out of their homes without stepping over a river if they can actually get over that river because there is so much runoff that the the drains are just not coping now with the amount of runoff so so I think it's a wider picture including planning perhaps in, in with the increase in development up there we just want to know that the authorities are looking at it in a joined up coordinated way and that we can resolve the problem because obviously the, the increase in runoff from the higher up the um out to above Laxey has a bigger impact if that is also running off down into the village when you've got all the other issues running into the river. And um, in keeping with Laxey flooding, um, you have another question about um, work that's been undertaken in Laxey R River to assist salmon spawning. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Well, the, the point was that, um, I mean, yesterday I was um, I met the liaison officer Richard Kenish who is, is assisting residents who are most impacted by the flood from the river and there is a significant amount of work now um, with a big chunk of the wall being reinstated re, uh, with steel reinforcement you know it's going to be significant improvement to the river but the the piece of um, salmon ladder has washed down and is a little bit further down the river from where it was being installed and the question is simply um, which authority and, and we presume it comes back to death and this was not answered at the public meeting. So people are very anxious to understand from an environmental point of view what was the um, significant importance that this salmon ladder, this, this assistance to salmon spawning in the river, what was the vital importance that it had to be installed in Laxey River at this time of year and why was a hole um, cut out of the wall to facilitate a digger to go in there again at this time of year when previously work has accessed it from the other side without cutting a hole in the wall and I think we'd all really appreciate from the Environment Minister knowing exactly the reasons for that. Why do you think that wasn't answered at the public meeting? Uh, I'm not sure it, it was it was put but that we didn't hear an answer so that's the in part what prompted me to table this question. And finally you're talking about off-road motorcycling um would you like to elaborate on that? You were talking about how that's going to affect the tourism industry as well. Um, well, it, there is a small amount of visitors who come over here to go off-road motorcycling particularly, and my understanding is that that is not permitted in parts of the UK. So that's that's number one. So, so why is it permitted here in a very... Um, unregulated way I suppose I don't want to spoil anybody's fun I think everybody on the island and our visitors are very welcome to enjoy the Isle of Man and all the Isle of Man has to offer but we all have very responsibility as well and I think with our biosphere reserve status anything we do in the countryside has to be in a sustainable way and what has been a recurring theme through the political surgeries we've held in Garth since the election three years ago consistently we have residents who are very upset about the amount of damage that some off-road motorcycling is uh, causing in our hill lands, on our footpaths and on our green lanes. And the particular areas are from Glenmona and Balaric at the Clarem Road and also Agnish and the Mines Trail. So, so while everybody wants everyone to enjoy all the island, 
the, the significance for me is um, what is the uh, value of that to the island as a, as a visitor attraction, but also what's the, the damage that is caused. And then sometimes, especially with the downfall we had with the, the amount we had a couple of weeks ago, when you have a rut caused in soft ground by an off-road vehicle, the, the rainwater, particularly if it's heavy, gets in that and causes significantly more erosion than if that, that rut hadn't been there. So And then these are then maintained or repaired at significant cost to the Manx taxpayer and where I'm coming from is yes we all want to enjoy the island but is there a time coming that perhaps the um, the off-road element should be more tightly controlled perhaps licensed and also perhaps contained to certain areas so that sensitive parts of our hilllands are protected from damage that is preventable.